Namaste everyone. Welcome back children. Children, the topic that we are going to take up today is about air, water and weather. And we know that air and water are those two major components that make the life possible on planet Earth. And if we talk about air, so it refers to the atmosphere of the Earth. And it consists of many gases, water vapors, dust particles and germs as well. And as far as water is concerned, we know that 71% of Earth's surface is covered with water. And that includes the seas, oceans, rivers and lakes. So today in this session, let us know more about air, water and weather. So children, this topic is divided into different parts. The air, water, wherein we'll talk about water cycle, weather and seasons. And in this video session, we'll talk about air, water and water cycle. So first of all, let us take up air. So what does air contain or what is air made up of or what are the constituents of air? We know the air contains the different gases, water vapor, dust particles, smoke and germs as well. Now, we'll talk about these different constituents of air one by one. So, first we have gases. Air contains many gases such as nitrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide. And children, we very well know that we breathe in oxygen from the air and we breathe out carbon dioxide. But now, let us know more about oxygen and nitrogen. Oxygen in air also helps in the process of burning. That means in the absence of oxygen, the process of burning will not happen. And nitrogen in the air is important for the growth of plants. And you know, nitrogen is also added in the soil as fertilizer for the plant growth. And now let us take up the another constituent of air and that is water vapor. Water evaporates into air when it is heated. For example, wet clothes dry when kept under the sun. Water in a pot evaporates into the air when heated on a gas stove. When the water gets heated, it gives rise to steam or water vapor. And these water vapors, they escape into the air. So they become the part of the air. Similar is the case with the clothes. When you hang clothes for drying, the water in the clothes gets heated up due to the heat of the sun and then the water vapors, they start rising up and they escape into the air and become the part of air. And now let us take up dust particles. If one observes a beam of light in dark room, dust particles can be seen floating in the air. So that means the floating dust particles are visible in a room when light falls on them. And I'm sure children, you must have seen this phenomena in your room as well. And next component of air is smoke. All types of smoke get mixed with the air. Smoke from vehicles and factories goes into the air. And smoke from burning objects goes into the air as well. So here as you can see the smoke coming out of the vehicles, factories or because of burning of things it becomes the part of the air. And if there is no check on the emission of smoke in the air it causes air pollution also. And not to miss the germs, germs which are present in the air. We know that when we cough or sneeze, we release germs into the air and there are fair chances that we infect others with these germs. So what is advised? That you should always cover your face when you cough or sneeze. So children, here we come to the end of the first part of today's topic that is air. And now we'll move on to the second part that is water. So we know that all living beings need water to live and water is used for many purposes like drinking, cooking or washing hands 
and there are endless uses of water. So children, let us see the movement of water in nature. There is a continuous movement of water between land, water bodies and air. And when we talk about water bodies, we talk about the seas, lakes, ponds and rivers. And we know that water undergoes two main processes and these are evaporation and condensation. And processes occur continuously in nature. So first we'll talk about the evaporation process. And we all know that it is a process in which water changes into water vapor. And this happens on heating. So that means when the water gets heated, it converts into water vapor. And as we know that wet clothes, they dry in the sun by the process of evaporation. The heat of the sun makes the water convert into water vapor and escape into the air. So this evaporation process is continuously taking place from the surface of the water bodies. And if we talk about condensation, it is a process in which water vapor changes into water. That means condensation happens on cooling. When the water vapor, they cool down, they form the water droplets. And for example, water droplets formed around the cold water bottle or a window pane. We know that water vapor present in the air when they touch the cold surface of the water bottle or the window pane, they condense to form water droplets. So children, now let us understand how evaporation and condensation, they are responsible for the movement of water in nature. Water in seas, rivers, lakes and ponds get heated by sun and evaporates. As you can see here, the water is evaporating from the water bodies because of the heat of the sun. These water vapor rise up into the air and condense on dust particles to form tiny water droplets. Large gatherings of such droplets on dust particles form cloud. So children, these water vapor, when they come in contact with the cold layer of atmosphere, they condense on dust particles present there and form tiny water droplets and large gathering of such droplets on dust particles form clouds. Many such tiny droplets when joined together, they become bigger droplets, become heavy and eventually fall on the earth's surface as rain. So, so what happens now is that these tiny water droplets, they start combining with each other and they become bigger and heavy and then they eventually fall on the earth's surface as raindrops. This rainwater gets collected in rivers, lakes, ponds and seas. Some part of it seeps into the soil and gets collected underground. So that means this rainwater, it again goes back to the ponds, lakes and rivers. And some of it goes underground and which is collected as groundwater. So th let us understand water cycle in few words. So first of all, due to the heat of the sun, the water which is present in lakes and oceans and rivers or in different water bodies, it changes into water vapor. And we call this process as evaporation. Water vapors they rise up in the sky and when they come in contact with the cold layer of atmosphere they condense to form tiny droplets of water and these tiny droplets of water they get attached with the dust particles present in the air and many such tiny droplets they condense to form clouds and we call this process as condensation and now these tiny droplets join together to become bigger droplets and once they become heavy they fall down on the surface of earth as rain and we call this process as precipitation so children this movement of water from land to sky and back to the land is known as water cycle 
And we can understand the same process through these pictures. As you can see, the heat of the sun heats up the water, which eventually give rise to water vapors. And we know that we call it evaporation. And we know these water vapor, they go up in the sky and when they touch the cold layer of atmosphere, they condense to form tiny droplets of water. And this condensation takes place on the dust particles present in the air. And we know that conversion of water vapor into water droplets is called condensation. And many such tiny droplets, when joined together, they form bigger droplets of water, become heavy and they fall on the surface of earth as rain. And we call this process as precipitation. And now the water gets collected back into the rivers or water bodies. So this is how the movement of water from land to the sky and back to the land takes place. So children that was all about water cycle and now let us move on to the keywords. So first is evaporation. We know that process in which liquid converts into gas on heating is called evaporation. What is condensation? Process in which gas converts to liquid on cooling. And if we talk about water cycle, continuous movement of water from land or water bodies to sky and back to the surface of the earth is called water cycle. So children, with this, let us move on to the recapitulation section just to see what all we have understood. Nitrogen is important for growth of plants. That is true. Air has dust particles and germs in it. That is also true. Condensation is conversion of liquid to gas. That is false because it is conversion of gas to liquid. Water cycle happens continuously in nature. That is true. Now let us take up the questions in think and answer section. What does air contain and explain water cycle? So I hope after going through this session, you know the composition of air as well as about the water cycle. And still, if you have doubts, you can go back to the video slide number 3 and 13. So children, that was all about air and its composition and the water cycle. And in our next video session, we'll talk about the different weather conditions and the different seasons that we experience. So until then, take care of yourselves.